Hey there, my name is Brad. I'm the Harley Davidson Wizard. We're back on the Screaming Eagle. I guess this is technically part of doing a safety inspection, but we're pretty much well beyond that. Uh, if you didn't see that video, go back and check out the actual safety inspection. But this is just like the completion of the vehicle. If you didn't see it, during the safety inspection, we found out that there was a problem. The neutral detent in the transmission, it was leaking coolant, uh, corrosion on I want to say the CB um, on the CB wiring up in the tour pack and I forget it was a week or so ago so we'll go back over all of that as we're doing it but while I was doing that video and we found out that the coolant temperature sensor was leaking I, I had remembered that there was a technical service bulletin out and I, I couldn't remember exactly what years it was and exactly even what it said, but I went back and double checked it. And it was saying, it was talking about if you had a 2014 or 15 model and it was leaking coolant from that temp sensor to tighten it down to 16 foot pounds. And essentially that some of the temp sensors were installed too loose. So that kind of brings us up to what we're gonna be talking about next, but let's take a look at the parts that we have. Oh, that's right. We also found out that the br front brake light switch wasn't working. That's part of the switch pack here. It's this, it's this little guy here on the back. That's a front brake light switch. But you have to buy the whole switch pack to get it. This is a special switch pack for a Screaming Eagle because the, the buttons behind it light up so you can see them at night. So originally we had seen where it was leaking coolant past here and I was thinking about putting some thread sealant on it and if you're looking for thread sealant this is some bad ass shit this is the best stuff out there this Loctite 545 I always use this on airlines when we're doing like air ride on vehicles but so I went back and I wanted to take a look at the tech tip and make sure I wasn't missing something and because I really rather not be like re-engineering stuff and you know ghetto rigging stuff if I don't need to so this is the original temp sensor and i don't know if you can see but you, there's just like the the smallest little s shiny copper area where it was like actually sealing up on the bottom of the radiator and this is the new the new one and it looks exactly identical and it does have a copper crush washer on it so that's supposed to be sealing stuff so i am not going to be putting the loctite on it because realistically the copper washer is supposed to be doing the job so we're going to torque it down the way that it says and go from there but for the rest of the stuff for the transmission uh some of the stuff i just kind of do like it's always a good idea to do a new arm to f have the best possible fit on the splines so this is the new shifter mechanism assembly as you can tell the the springs are installed correctly so that's good new gasket new screw for the arm uh, these two pieces go on the shifter mechanism a seal and a new bushing and a new seal for the back of the primary and we're going to be using that Jim's tool to reinstall this so that you don't have to remove the whole gear set so that's kind of nice and then we have the new antenna assembly that goes up from the fairing all the way back to the bike and then from this part goes up in the tour pack and then this comes out in front of the tour pack and plugs in here and then these two pieces as well and then the rest of the stuff to put the primary back together so that's basically it i'm going to get started on doing the coolant temp sensor put that in and then just getting the rest of the back the front and the back of the lower fairing together it's a little bit easier without the shifter lever and all that that stuff right here so we're going to do that part first
One little trick that I like to do is before I take this bracket off, like if I'm just do, if I just have to remove something for service reasons or whatever, there's there's a lot of slop in where the fairing can go, and there's measurements in the service manual that tell you how far it goes from the top points and the bottom points. But what I do, I just take a little magic marker, a permanent marker, and scrub where the little bracket was. Scribes is the wrong word, but mark where the bracket used to be. And then when I put the bracket back on, it's easy to know that's exactly where it was. Because a lot of times, like especially with lower fairings, like a customer knows where like the lower fairing is, you know, just by the way that their foot feels when it's on foot peg. So little changes here can make big drastic changes in just the way the vehicle was when it came in. So and that and especially on chrome it's super easy to remove permanent marker i just use a little bit of my multi-purpose solvent it's a alcohol based cleaner and it just wipes right off but i'm going to get the screws back in that bracket put the cap on and we're almost finished with this and we'll get on over to the transmission If you didn't see it before, here is the tool that we use to remove the shifter shaft sleeve and also the shifter mechanism. This is the new one, but this is the three piece tool. So this is from Jim's. It's part number 5517. So <clears throat> it should go back together basically in the same way that it came apart, just in reverse. I haven't read the directions yet, so we're going to be doing it both at the same time. But let's get the shifter mechanism back in, and then we should be driving the sleeve in from the outside. And let's get going. So here's the shifter, the new shifter mechanism. It had us pull back that top spring before, and then the whole assembly should slide in there. Let me get in there. Oh, I remember. I think it did. I think it had to come out like that and then rotate up. Let's try that. Oh, there we go. It is like, it, it's a very close fit. You gotta wiggle it in there just right. But our new shifter mechanism's in there. Let's read them directions. All right. So, replace the shifter lever assembly in the case without, without the sleeve. Insert new sleeve onto that part of the tool, number two, is that right? Insert new sleeve into number, I'm just saying two installer guide. All right, so here's that number two, it said, oh, so it does, it fits right inside. Oh, there's a little bit of a lip. Like, it's such a little lip, I couldn't even really see it in real life. It's so slides in like that. That's pretty dope. Then insert into transmission case using the driver. It's that big dog. Tap until it bottoms out on the number two installer guide. All right. So that makes sense like this part must be indexed off of that bore and then and then our installer will bottom out right when it's perfectly flat so that makes sense 
All right, I'm gonna put a little bit of oil on this just so I'm not like ram ramming things together dry. I'm gonna put a little bit of oil on the outside and a little bit of oil on the inside. It looks like it has the, a little more taper on this side, so I'm gonna get that side going into the transmission first. And then we're gonna tap it with a brass hammer and see how it goes. But that looks pretty, that's a pretty nifty little setup. All right, now we're back, we're cleaned up. We, we got oil on it. So, so it looks like it should slide on just like that. And you get it started just like that. I don't know if the GoPro can get in this close. All right, and then I just want to make sure that the shifter lever isn't like binding up or something crazy. So we're just going to go slow, go slowly. making sure everything everything's no, still nice and free that's good all right you could hear an audible difference right there at the end all right that is looking mighty sweet right there all right, let's get our spot cleaned up and we'll put the rest of this together and then push the seal in. I don't know how much of a view is gonna pop up, but our metal bushing is perfectly placed. The aluminum bore is completely not gouged. It looks beautiful. That is excellent. So we're gonna go back up here and then put our spring back up here where it's supposed to be. Just like that. Then I'm just gonna flop it over like that. And then on the inside, maybe you can get a view. We're gonna be pushing our neutral detent screw right in between those two springs so let's do that now that goes right here so we we've got a new one of these to install i always like installing these like if i have to replace them for whatever reason i like to install new ones because it has this really good lock patch on it and that keeps oil from leaking out of there but you could reuse it if you had to so we're gonna go in slowly and I'm gonna feel, I'm gonna push this shifter assembly backwards a little bit. Actually, I'm gonna undo that spring again. Give me a little more room. Cause it's tight quarters in there. But I can reach through the back of it and feel the center of the spring and that's where the, the pin is going to go. It's going to go in between those two tabs that are sitting up. So I'm just going in slowly around the wrong side of it. torque this bolt down to spec all right you won't be able to tell but I'm gonna look down in there um, maybe you will be able to tell you can see the spring There's that little black rod I just pushed through there and it's in between the two ears so that's installed correctly everything's looking good there now we're gonna get this guy back the way he's supposed to be okay make sure she's fully pulled up 
That's good. That's good. You should move one way. You should move the other way. Oh, it feels so much better. So now, the thing I'm gonna do before I put the cover on, I'm gonna put the seal and then the little metal washer thing and the little snap ring thing. Because I wanna make sure this is all perfect before I put the trans top cover on and put the rest on. So let's get going with that. The way I do this, I'm sure there's a, an, a fancy tool out there, but you can tell where it's blind. And then there's a little, a little ridge in it for a snap ring. And then the shaft expands a little bit where the seal sits. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna clean the spline, the spline area with the multi-purpose solvent. And I'm gonna wrap just one layer of green tape around it and make sure that it covers the splines and that little drop down area for the snap ring. And then I'm gonna oil the outside of the green tape. And I'm gonna use, I believe it's a 716 socket. That's the perfect size for the seal. And it should just slip right in. That way I'm not damaging the seal on any of the splines or this machined area. But let's get to doing that. I clean it so that the tape sticks pretty well. You don't want to go back too far because if it gets stuck under the seal after you install it, it's a pain in the butt. So like right there, I'm just ripping off the extra, rolling it over, and then I like to make like a little titsy rolled type of deal out of it. All right, I said 7 16ths earlier, I was incorrect, it's half inch. But with my socket, it has just a narrow enough ridge where it sits just right on the outside perimeter of the seal and it doesn't touch the inner dust lip. The seal already has like grease on it, I'm sure for installation purposes, but we're gonna shoot a little bit of oil on there. Just like that. And then I coat the tape with it. Then I slide it over the tape. And then I get it started just by hand. And then it usually just, you get it lined up just right. And then it usually just, can it sit right in there. All right, and then I'm just gonna bop it with my dead blow hammer to seat it in that bore. All right, that's looking pretty good. You don't, you don't have to go crazy with it. Like it's just a little rubber seal. You just be careful. And then you want to make sure that your shifter lever is all the way out. And then I get in there with my flashlight and I look, I'm like blowing the picture out, but I look super close and make sure that there isn't any evidence of like a rip or a little like rubber, like sometimes like if something wrong happens, not on the seal, on like any type of seal, You'll see like a little rubber piece that's kind of caught something sharp and peeled off. So I get in there and we look real close, but everything looks good. And then depending on how well I put the tape on. And then now that that's all done, I just go back with my pick, try to find the edge that I started the tape on like right there. And undo it and that thing is installed perfectly so then the next step is to put the little metal washer up on top it has like a stamp side where the edge is rolled over and then it has the other side where it's not as rolled over I like to put the most flat side 
like up against there. I don't know. Makes me feel good. And then put our little snap ring thing in. You can assemble it all with like the snap ring, not in the actual groove. So you gotta be careful and conscious just that you're back there in the actual groove. When you are, it should kind of just like rotate like that pretty freely. So everything's looking good there, nice and free. Now we're gonna put the little lever on there, put the screw on it and click it through the gears and make sure it's looking right. All right, so the shifter levers always go with the bolt forward and never pointing up or backwards. It always points kind of like right at this front screw hole. That's important to remember because if you have it like too far forward, the primary won't fit right. And you can get it together on some models where like, where it will fit all together and then it won't fully be able to shift, so. Just make note of where you took it off. We're using a new screw here. It already has Loctite on it. I'm just getting it run down in there. All right, now that it's starting to get tight, I like to push it all the way back, like, because there's a little bit of slop in it. I don't know if you can see that down there. Again, I'm sure it doesn't really even matter, but I kind of hold it up tight up against that snap ring. And then you crank the shit out of it. Oh yeah, just like that. Before we start putting everything together, it would be wise of us to double check and make sure that everything works. So right now we're in neutral, nothing spinning. That should be first gear. And uh, we'll click back halfway for neutral again. And then second gear, third gear, fourth, fifth, sixth gear. All right, so everything there is assembled correctly. I'm just gonna put the new gasket on and torque the screws back down for the trans cap top cover. We're just gonna speed through that and let's keep on going. So we already have everything all buttoned up for the transmission. Everything's all good with this inner primary bearing race. We already have the front seal on. All we have left to do is replace the seal on the back of the primary. Let me show you how I do that. So the par first part to not messing this up is getting the seal out without damaging the bore. So the way that I do this is I use a conventional seal puller, but very delicately. So I get myself a nice clean cloth and kind of fold it up like that. Because if you just go in here and start prying on it, you'll gouge this, this top edge of the bore, and then that can gouge the seal as you're putting the new seal in. So I use that as a little buffer and then I just get under the corner of it. And then very smoothly, just pull it up. And then if you have a bike with some mileage on it, and if it's leaking, like if you're in here to replace the seal specifically because it's leaking, you'll obviously want to look at the circumference of your seal and see if it's all jacked up. But ours isn't. And our snap ring is in a good enough spot where it's not messing up the, the oil hole. 
So then we want to make sure that the lead in chamfer is nice and clean. I don't know if you can tell, but there's like a little a chamfer here and that helps the new seal go in. I put the seal in, I've seen where people oil the seal and then you can push it in almost by hand. And in situations like that, I've seen that bike come later, come back later where the seal is like popped off and then the oil is running out. So I've always put the seal in dry. Some seals I lubricate when I put them, put them in and then other seals, I put them in dry. This is one of those pretty rare cases that the seal goes in dry, but you can tell it has little markings on it. On a Harley Davidson seal, it'll tell you the oil side. So you put it in there. And then when it's dry, you can get it almost all of the way in just by hand. And I'll just use a dead blow hammer to tap it in the rest of the way. When I do that, I put this in my lap so I'm not like beating the primary against the table or something. So I'm gonna do that. Now that our seal's in, I like to, as I'm tapping it in, I like to go around and feel it by hand to make sure that it's perfectly flush. And then rather than just like slamming it on that race, nice and dry, I just shoot a little bit of fresh oil in there, get a little bit on my finger, and lube up that seal, because seals do not like to be run dry. Nobody likes when you just stick it in dry. So lube your seal up, and then if you have a new bearing, I always lube up the bearing too, and kind of like pack it full of oil, but this one's still good. So we're gonna slide it on the main shaft over there and make sure that it's fully seated. I'll tap the primary in with the butt of my hammer just to make sure everything's fully seated. And then we'll torque the inner primary screws to spec. All right, so there's a series of dowel pins back here. And you also wanna make sure at this point that your starter is free and loose, but there's a series of dowel pins back there that need to line up with the case and the bearing kind of has to line up on the main shaft. So that's where I go in slowly and then tap it in. Well, just tap to confirm that everything's seated correctly. These new inner primary bolts have a little rubber seal. So you just shoot a little bit of oil on them. Just a little bit, but that was more than needed. Get a little bit on that seal. Now I'm gonna run the bolts in and then torque them and then we'll come back. Just when you think the project was going nice and smooth, we basically have everything back together. We're just pulling the derby cover off to fill it with oil. 
And it's like all of these screws are just like, hold on, let's see if they have Loctite on them. Because I hate when people do that. Oh, it's even worse. It's rusty corrosion. Oh, well that sucks. Because like the top, there's two on there that hardly move. I already twisted my bit. I keep a backup bit just for situations like this. So, hopefully we don't break them off in there. Because that, that would be a nightmare. But, this is a hammer driven impact. So, I'm going to get another bit toss it in here and I'm going to tighten it just a little bit and then try to turn it back the other way and pull them back off. So let's give that a shot. I'm gonna put one screw back in here just so the whole cover isn't like wobbling and chattering as I work back on this other one. All right, here we go. Wish me luck. Sweet beauty. Ta da. Well, that could have turned into a real nightmare if we would have broken one of those heads off. But all of these holes are all nasty, with, filled with rust, so I'm going to be getting five new screws and then cleaning these screws out with a thread chaser and uh, the multi-purpose solvent that we have to break up any of that loose crud. We're gonna fill it with oil, get this new screws, get this thing, get this project going. So as it turns out, we do not have the correct bolts in stock. So I'm just gonna be tossing five of these bad guys in here. And that's just for the time being so it doesn't leak oil out everywhere. And hopefully we won't run into any other issues. I'm just gonna put these things in here loosely. I'm just gonna to toss the footboard on and keep on going.
All right, so our transmission situation is all finished up. Look at how nice and tight this thing is. Oh yeah, that is the business. And nothing, as far as like a, a clicking or a clunking or a clanking. Oh gosh, that's gonna be, it's gonna be a nice shifter setup to use. Like that's the way that it's supposed to be, but it is especially nice right now. So the next part of the job is gonna be putting on the, uh, the right hand control module and the antenna assembly. The antenna assembly is pretty easy as far as pulling the gas tank and the seat off and the outer fairing. And then we'll just unplug the antenna that's up there and we'll run the new one along with where the old one used to, used to go and I'll cut out the old one where I can. Sometimes it's it's so bound into the original wiring harness that I just cut off the part that's not being used anymore so that it doesn't get confused with the correct antenna in future situations but that part's pretty straightforward so I'm not going to talk any while I do that and it's pretty boring so I'm just going to pop the gas tank all that stuff off and just do a quick run of the new antenna and fix up everything in the tour pack and then we'll come back for bleeding the cooling system and maybe a test ride so here we go So we finished everything up, all we have to do is bleed the cooling system. So this is a Madco tool that I have, and it's for bleeding the cooling system. There's two different ways of doing this. You can use this, this type of tool, and then a little bit of conventional bleeding, or you can do a whole lot of conventional bleeding. But basically what you do is it consists of this unit right here. You hook shop air pressure up to this. And then it makes a little Venturi setup, so it draws a sit, it draws a vacuum on the system, and then it picks up fresh coolant through 
for this tube. So this, I'm just going to submerge in, in a bottle of cooler. And then I'm just going to hold the tool up to the neck of the cooling system. Hook my air pressure up to it. And then we start drawing a vacuum on it. I like to draw a coolant up to right about here and then draw more of a vacuum on it. Oh man, we messed it up. And then I'll hold the vacuum and then there's a vacuum in the cooling system now. So we open this lever and it will draw coolant into the system. Once it's done, it does that. Now that it's mostly bled, I just use, I have just a little bit of coolant in here so this bottle isn't real heavy. And then you'll turn the ignition switch on with the throttle wide open. Turns the cooling fans on and the coolant pump. Just like that. coolant up to the top. I'll just sit here for a little bit, let the coolant pump run, and I'll jiggle the motorcycle. I feel like that helps. Alright, so the cooling system is full. put the cap on it. I'm going to fill the reservoir up to its normal level and I test ride it and I make sure that the vehicle gets up to temperature. You want the coolant to be running through everything and then let the vehicle cool off and then check the coolant again because you'll probably need to add just a little bit. But that's the way that I, I bleed the cooling system. Alright well that's it for this bike for today. We're going to wait till we get the new derby cover screws in. Take it for a test ride get it fully warm check the cooling system but I won't make a video for that because that's just boring so that concludes this vehicle turned into a little bit more work than just a safety inspection but hopefully that gives you some good ideas to keep in mind as far as things to look for and check over on your bike on a regular basis thanks for watching like and subscribe